Okay. Hi, everybody. It's Emmy. Um, I'm sorry about last week how I didn't get a video up. Um, I was a little busy and I had a lot of things to do. I completely forgot about it. So I'm sorry. I'm going to answer last week's questions as well as this week's questions. So how's everyone been? You know, how's life? Um, mine's great. You know, today's actually been a really good day for me. So happy Friday. Now let's see what the questions are for last week. It was July 8th through July 14th. Okay. Question number six. I'm just going to start right away because I really have nothing else to say. And if I do, I'll probably remember it and say it after. So, a Beatles song that always cheers you up. I'm going to have to say... Oh, bloody, oh, blah, blah. Because, like, the feel of it, you know? It's so, like, bubbly and fun. Like, you know, it's just really good. Like, it's it's a good song. It's a cute song. And even though John did regret doing that later, um, I just think it's really cute. I'm so glad they did it. Like, honestly, I love that song. And Hey Jude cheers me up, too. Okay. A Beatles photo that makes you happy. I'll put that at the beginning. You'll see. Okay. <laughs> And no, it's not two virgins, so everyone calm down. Okay. Favorite Beatles album. Okay, that's really, really hard. But um, they had a lot of... What am I talking about? Every album that the Beatles ever made was good. Um, but I'm going to have to say my favorite album is going to be between... Because I can't actually decide for a favorite album. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, Abbey Road, or... Please please me. I'm going to have to say those three. So I really love those three. And if I had to choose, if someone put a knife to my neck and t asked me what my favorite Beatle album was, Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. Oh, you know what's another good one? Magical Mystery Tour. Okay, I know I didn't say that before. Hare Krishna. It is such a good album, okay? You just, what am I saying? It's a good album. Okay. A Beatles picture that makes you angry or sad. I'm going to have to say a lot of the Beatles photo shoots they did with Yoko hanging around makes me sad because, like, when you see those pictures, like, let it be, like, in the studio sessions and stuff, it's just kind of sad to see that because you know that the Beatles are coming to an end and you know that Yoko's already in John's life, like, a lot and they were already in love and the public knew and stuff. So, like, just seeing them all, like, droopy and they were all angry all the time. Like, they weren't angry all the time. I shouldn't say that. They were more just, they were, like... How do I put this? They were just, they were, there was a lot of tension between everyone, you know, including especially John and Yoko versus the rest of the band because, like, you know, nobody really wanted Yoko there except John. Everybody knows that. So, like, there was a lot of tension going on between the band and everyone knew it was obviously going to end. Let It Be was almost the last album, which would have sucked. So, thank God they have Abbey Road, but still, I don't like those, like, like the Abbey Road photo shoot itself at, um, John's home in England, like, when, when he had, like, the beard and Yoko was there and stuff, I didn't like that, like, those pictures make me sad, they're never smiling, like, if you notice, like, most of the pictures, they're just standing there, and it was the last photo shoot they ever did together, too, which also makes me angry and sad, so, yeah. Favorite Beatles outfits? Okay, well, to be honest, I really love when John Lennon wears a white suit. I mean, I don't, I'm not crazy about the beard and stuff, but oh my god, the white suit, that was good. I love that. Um, I love what they wore at Shea Stadium. Like, I don't know, I know those are like performance clothes, but they're just so hot. <laughs> like, they look so good in them, I don't know. Um, I love Paul's sweater vest for Magical Mystery Tour. Like, really. If I could buy that off, I probably would. <laughs> so, yeah. I like that a lot. I love... Let me think. I love their clothes in A Hard Day's Night. I mean, I know half the time they're just suits, but they just look so cute in suits, you know? <laughs> I, I don't like the early, early, early suits. Like, the beginning of 1963. Like, that's not really... It was okay, you know? They looked cute. They were beginners, huh? <laughs> But in A Hard Day's Night with, like, the black tuxedo and, like, tux, whatever, and the tie and John's hat, it was just, it was cute. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Beetle. Okay, this is this week. Beetle Tumblr Challenge Quiz. Yeah, okay. So, question 11 is, favorite Beatles era? Honestly, 
I like all of them. Like, there was no favorite era. I loved the each era had their own special thing about it that I love so much. Like, whether they looked good or the music, the music was good the whole time. But, um, I like, everyone likes 1964 and 1965 because they were young, they were famous, they were in their heyday, they looked good. Um, I like... 1963, everyone likes them. Everyone likes the beginning, so, you know, there's no really, there's no favorite. It's just the beginning, the middle, and the end. Everyone, the middle was pretty good. Um, I really love Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, like, that whole psychedelic John has a mustache era. That was awesome, okay. For some reason, I never really dug that until, like, recently. Like, I just looked at a picture of John with the mustache, and I'm just like, that looks good. So ever since then, I've just been like, yeah. He looks good with a mustache. Okay. So, if I was... If someone put a gun to my appendix and asked me if um, if I had a favorite Beatles era, I'd say Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band or 1965. A Beatles song you know all the words to. Give me a break. I know, like, the words to all the songs. Um, basically, all of them. Like, I really have no answer for that. Like, I don't... Not every single song, but, like, the majority of songs. I mean, I bet the most of you do anyway if you're on this in the first place. So, all of them, I guess, question mark. Your least favorite Beatles song. Um, I don't like Revolution 9. I wouldn't really call that a song. Because, like, I don't know. Like, I don't like it. I mean, what am I saying? I do know. It's really weird, like, the noises in it and stuff. It's not a song. It's just... A collaboration of strange noises and psychedelic backwards tracks and babies crying and someone saying number nine on repeat for the first two minutes. But I never liked it. Like, it kind of creeped me out, especially if you play it backwards. It's, like, weird. <laughs> like, I don't know. I never liked that one too much. Um, I don't really like what goes on that much. Like, I don't know. It's just it's not catchy. It's dry. I don't like the feel of it very much. I don't have too many Beatles songs that I don't like. Um, Dig a Pony is okay. I don't know. I didn't really like the Let It Be album that much. Someone's going to kill me for saying that, but it's true. I didn't like it. It's like, there weren't that many songs on it. And I just, I didn't like the feel of it. It was like depressing and Yoko and, no. Okay. Five things you would change about the Beatles. I'd change John's sudden relationship with Yoko Ono. I mean, that's not really the Beatles, but it almost kind of is because it affected the Beatles in a big ways. So I would change the fact of, like, what happened with Yoko, her being in the studio all the time and, like, following John and the whole divorce with Cynthia and stuff, that whole mess. That screwed everyone up because not only was there tension between John and his personal life, but there was tension between the band too which I said earlier so that kind of sucked you know um I would definitely change that I would change bigger than Jesus that they lost a lot of fans just from that one remark I mean I know he was sorry about it and he didn't really mean to offend anyone you know but um it just it it like the whole death threat thing that was awful I'd change the death of Brian Epstein i Wish I could. If I could do that, I would. Um, but obviously I can't. I'd change that. That's three. I'd change the whole Paul is dead thing. I, I personally thought that was, like, really stupid. Like, I'm sorry. That just confused a lot of people. And now people are really superstitious. And I would... If I had a band, I wouldn't want any of the members, even if they wanted to. I wouldn't, any, I wouldn't want anyone thinking I was dead. Like, that's not cool. Like, that's not, that's confusing, you know? Like, no one likes that. Like, no one wants to think of Paul McCartney being dead. That's awful. Just me saying it now gives me chills. It's horrible. I never like that. And the fifth thing I would do, um, probably, hmm, the horrible addiction to LSD. Because John himself almost lost his life from that. A lot of the, I mean, I'm sure most of them, a lot of, like, the Beatles and the people surrounding them were so addicted to this LSD. 
I mean, people say let the LSD help them with their music. I personally don't agree because they could have done all of that without the drugs. Like, honestly, drugs are awful. I, I never... They shouldn't have gotten into drugs in the first place, but, you know, you couldn't stop that. That was so early in the beginning, like, way back. So, you know, that was already on a roll, but the LSD really really took a toll on all of them i mean you see it in their music you see it on their face you see it in their clothing the clothing was cool you know it matched the era and stuff and so did the music but like the way it was affecting them their minds like it was just really screwing everyone up so those are the things i would change about the beatles and my favorite beatles book i think i've been i think we've asked this before but i'll say it again john by cynthia lennon I mean, I know she's obviously not a Beatle, but she's a Beatle wife, so, you know, it's about one of the Beatles. It's about the Beatles in general. A lot of it has to do with the Beatles, of course, and I've said that, like, six times in the past five seconds. But anyways, um, yeah, I really love Cynthia Lennon's book. Again, this is, like, the fourth time I say this, but if you haven't read it, you should read it. If you think you know John Lennon and you haven't read this book, you don't know John Lennon. You have to read this book. Like, it's really really good it, it was so touching to me it was just it's like a disney movie except it's better so you know what it's reality disney right there so except the happily ever after thing didn't really work out so you if you haven't seen it you really got to go see it like i mean read it sorry <laughs> read it i'm thinking of a movie but anyways it's like they should make that into a movie except Whenever they make movies about John or Paul or something, they always get, like, an awful guy to play each character. Like, come on. The guy who played Paul in Nowhere Boy? No. Like, he does not look like Paul McCartney at all. Aaron Johnson, I'll let him pass. He's really hot. But otherwise, no. Like, they always get, like, the worst people to play John. But, um, anyways. So those are all the qu- Wow, that took a really long time. <laughs> those are all the questions for- from last week and this week. So, hope you have a good week, and I'll see you next Friday. So, a Ringo pick. Enjoy that. Bye!